Welcome to the chapter Our Constitution. This slide presents the overview of the chapter. Learning objectives. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to understand the making of our constitution. Describe preamble of the Indian constitution. Explain the terms of the preamble and their concepts. Recognize right to freedom. Interpret the meaning of self-respect national integration and universal brotherhood identify the fundamental rights and duties we will first start with the introduction we all know that in india we have a president prime minister at the national level and at the state level we have a chief minister for every state we also know that they provide their services to the people by following specific rules and regulations. Do you know these rules and regulations are written in a book called the Indian Constitution? Do you know when, where and how the Indian Constitution was started? Do you know what is meant by the preamble of the Constitution? In this chapter, let us know about the Indian Constitution in detail. Let us now go through the topic, our constitution. After getting freedom from colonial rule, that is after the independence in the year 1947, our leaders decided to write down all the basic principles and procedures which ought to be followed by our country in the form of a book. The book was called as the Indian Constitution. This initiative took place under the leadership of the first president of India, that is, Dr. Babu Rajendra Prasad. Our constitution contains the following set of rules. How the country should be governed, what changes can be made in the laws, how the government should be formed, what would be the role of the citizens, what would be their rights, etc. The Indian constitution has provided a provision to change the rules in case the people demand changes. Note. Indian constitution is the biggest constitution in the world. Now we will go through the making of our constitution. In the process of making our constitution, the Indian leaders organized several meetings with intellectuals and discussed all the issues in detail. Then a drafting committee was formed with Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar as the chairman of the committee. The drafting committee included members like Gopala Swami Iyengar, Alladi Krishna Swami Iyer, K. M. Munshi, Syed Muhammad Sadullah, N. Madhavarao, etc. The committee members carried intense debates, observed the constitutions of various countries, and then framed the constitution accordingly. On 26th November 1949, the Constituent Assembly accepted the written constitution. On 24th January 1950, all the members of the Constituent Assembly signed it. Finally, the Indian constitution came into effect on 26th January 1950. That is the day from when our country is being ruled according to the Indian constitution and since then 26th January is celebrated as the Republic Day every year. Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding.
Let us look at the preamble of the Indian Constitution. Our Constitution starts with a preamble. The preamble can be referred to as the introduction which highlights the objectives of the entire Constitution. We will now read the preamble of the Indian Constitution to understand it. We the people of India we the people of India means all the children and the elders of India. According to the 2011 census of India, our population is 121 crores. In India, there are 1652 languages in total. Our constitution recognized 22 languages. Sovereign, Socialist, Secular, Democratic, Republic State Sovereign means independent authority of a country. This states that India is no longer a dependency or a colony of the British. India is free both internally, internal efforts and externally, external efforts to take her own decisions and implement these for her people and her territories. Socialist The word socialist signifies that the ownership and control of the wealth of the community are distributed equally to serve the common people without any inequality. Secular The preamble to the Constitution of India proclaims that India is a secular state. The word secular states that India guarantees equal freedom to all religions. All religions enjoy equality of status and respect. Do you know, out of the total Indian population, Hindus are 80%, Muslims are 13% and Christians are 2%, the remaining 5% are six, Buddhists and Jains etc. Hinduism, Sikhism, Buddhism and Jainism are the religions that were born in India. Among them, Buddhism is the religion that God spread to other countries. Democratic Republic the Constitution of India provides for a democratic system. According to this, all the citizens have equal political rights. The citizens are free to participate in the democratic process of self-rule. The government formed of the people, by the people and for the people is called a democratic form of government. In a democratic government, people cast their vote and elect the leaders. The laws are made by the leaders we elect through elections. These laws will be made in the parliament. Parliament has two houses, that is, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. The total number of members in parliament is 790. 543 members are elected to the Lok Sabha by the people through voting. Two members will be nominated without elections. For Rajya Sabha, 233 members will be elected. For Rajya Sabha, 12 members will be nominated without elections. In our country, persons who are of age 18 years or above have the right to vote. Equal Justice, Social, Economical, Political Justice Justice The preamble ensures justice for all its citizens. Justice means all are equal before law. Every citizen of India is equal in terms of receiving education, implementation of laws, honor, dignity, opportunities, etc., irrespective of their gender, religion, or castes. Equality Equality does not mean all human beings are equal mentally and physically. It means equality of status and opportunity. Any type of discrimination is prohibited. Everyone should be given equal respect irrespective of gender, race, caste, language, religion, etc. Fraternity This means the inculcation of a strong spiritual and psychological unity among the people. The main purpose is to foster unity among all the citizens. Knowledge Check Attempt the following questions to check your understanding.
So now, we will look at the right to freedom provided by the Indian Constitution in brief. Our Constitution provides us with many kinds of freedom. Some of them are freedom of speech and expression, freedom to move freely throughout the territory of India, freedom of residing in any part of the territory of India, freedom of practicing any religion, etc. Here, we will know what is meant by self-respect, national integration, and universal brotherhood according to our constitution. Our constitution says that everyone should receive equal respect. All the people of our society should live as members of a single family with affection. All the citizens of India should strive together for the development of our country. To build national integrity, our country should be strengthened and its unity in diversity should be respected and understood. All the Indians should maintain brotherhood, that is, living like brothers and sisters. In spite of diverse languages, religions and food habits, all should live in unity. Now let us learn about fundamental rights and duties. The Indian constitution has provided its citizens with some fundamental rights and duties. There are six fundamental rights. Right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation, right to freedom of religion, right to education and culture, right to constitutional remedies. Similarly, the constitution has given certain duties also. Respecting the constitution national flag and national anthem, cherishing the noble ideals of the freedom struggle, defending the country and rendering national service when called for, upholding and protecting the sovereignty, unity and integrity of India, promoting harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the people of India and renouncing any practice derogatory to the dignity of women. Preserving the rich heritage of the nation's composite culture. Protecting and improving the natural environment including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife and having compassion for living creatures. Developing scientific aptitude, humanity and spirit of inquiry for reform. Safeguarding public property and abjuring violence striving for the excellence in all individual and collective activities. Now, let us go through the final conclusion. So children, we all must and should recognize and follow our constitution. The constitution has provided us with freedom, rights and duties. We all should practice them. But in reality, do all people follow the rules and duties prescribed in our constitution? The answer is no. There are many children who do not get an opportunity to go to school. They are forced to work as child laborers. Also, there are many children who are not healthy. They are not provided with proper food. If this is the case, then it shows that all children are not given equal chance to lead a healthy life and go to school. Thus, the right to equality, justice, freedom will remain unattentive. Hence, it is our responsibility to make the lives of all the people better by our sincerity, justice and service. In addition, it is everyone's duty to plant trees, reduce pollution and protect and conserve the environment. Let us do a simple activity of identifying the names of a few Indian leaders. Observe the images and identify their corresponding names by dragging and dropping the names onto the image.
Keywords. List of keywords are shown on the screen. Summary. Let us recap the highlights of this chapter. After getting freedom from colonial rule, that is after the independence in the year 1947, our leaders decided to write down all the basic principles and procedures which ought to be followed by our country in the form of a book. The book was called as the Indian Constitution. This initiative took place under the leadership of the first president of India, that is Dr. Babu Rajendra Prasad. Indian Constitution is the biggest constitution in the world. The Indian Constitution has provided a provision to change the rules in case people demand changes. In the process of making our constitution, the Indian leaders organized several meetings with intellectuals and discussed all the issues in detail. Then, a drafting committee was formed with Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar as the chairman of the committee. The drafting committee included members like Gopala Swami Iyengar, Alladi Krishna Swami Ayer, K. M. Munshi, Syed Muhammad Sadullah, and Madhav Rao, etc. On 26th November 1949, the Constituent Assembly accepted the written constitution. On 24th January 1950, all the members of the Constituent Assembly signed it. Finally, the Indian Constitution came into effect on 26th January 1950. That is the day from when our country is being ruled according to the Indian Constitution and since then 26th January is celebrated as Republic Day every year. Our constitution starts with a preamble. The preamble can be referred to as the introduction which highlights the objectives of the entire constitution. Improve your learning. Read the questions and attempt the answers on your own. You can click answer for your reference. Follow-up work Take up the following activities. Collect information on the latest elections held in your village. Prepare a table on the basis of the particulars given below. Write it in your notebook and analyze it. Why are elections held? Name the contestants. Name the winners and the services rendered by them in your village. The Constitution has provided freedom and equality to us. Visit and observe your village and find out whether anybody from your village is not receiving the freedom and equality granted to us by the Constitution. Write down the important aspects of the Constitution on a chart and exhibit it in your classroom. Look at the following table. The particulars of some people of the society are given below. Fill in the particulars regarding the extent to which they are given respect by putting a tick mark. You have marked for different people. Your friends might also have marked who is respected the most, who is respected the least. What did you understand from this? Test your understanding of the chapter by taking the mock unit test. You have successfully completed the chapter or constitution.